Hello, I'm Erin Tucker, coming to you from the LG Digital Studio at Georgetown University School of Continuing Studies. In focus today, DC Nightlife. I'm joined by Sean Townsend, the first ever director for Nightlife and Culture housed within Washington, DC's mayor's office. Some have called him the Nightlife Mayor. Welcome, Sean. Thanks for having me. Thank you for being here. Sean, could you tell us a little bit about your journey to become the Director of Nightlife and Culture in D.C.? Yeah, so uh, it's quite interesting. I spent the last five years prior to this as uh, a supervisory investigator at uh, the, our city's alcohol uh, licensing agency um, and just, you know, uh, bumped into an opportunity to apply, uh, went through a vigorous uh, application process where uh, close to 500 other applicants um, were interested. Oh, wow. And uh, I started last December of 2018. So um, the journey has been quite uh, interesting, uh, so to speak. So I'm, I'm happy to be here. Wow, that is, that's really great. Um, could you describe maybe the significance of the office? A lot of people call you the nightlife mayor, <laughs> but don't necessarily understand the significance of the office and the benefits that it provides other businesses. Yeah, so to be clear, I am, uh, I'm not the night mayor. We have a daytime and a, and a nighttime mayor um, who, I, who I gladly work for. So I'm the director of the mayor's office of nightlife and culture, mm -hmm. um, and we're housed in the mayor's office. We sort of serve as a, an intermediary, a bridge builder between nightlife businesses, district residents, and district agencies, um, and really just focus on uh, the, the, uh, the positive impact of the nightlife economy, um, how to continue its thriving culture, and how the city can um, you know, continue to benefit uh, financially uh, from the existence of our thriving nightlife. So this, this um, this model was uh, created in, in, in Europe, uh, Amsterdam, and it kind of traveled around to other cities across the water. Mm -hmm. And uh, a few other cities have adopted it, so we are one of about 13 other cities right now. Okay. Um, how do you see interacting, the D.C. office interacting with these uh, other global cities um, really in this space? And how do you see yourself really interacting um, as a kind of a counterpart to these cities? Yeah, it's a good question. We, we are connected to the, the other cities in the U.S. Uh, we, we have a quarterly conference call that's usually a couple of hours because uh, every city we get to share our best practices, some of our shortcomings. Um, so that we're all uh, sort of gaining that experience from other jurisdictions. And it's really been helpful because I've applied some things that I've heard from New York um, mm -hmm. uh, to, to D.C. And I think that uh, me creating that relationship with my New York counterpart, who I, I communicate with closely, uh, we've been able to share some, some good advice from her. In fact, we've We've, uh, we're working on a nightlife study here in D.C. that okay. we've sort of adopted from uh, the New York Nightlife Office. So uh, more globally, we, we bump into uh, the global uh, nightlife representatives at conferences and seminars, et cetera. Um, and they're, they are um, interested in seeing the growth of this position as well across the country. So uh, we're all sort of integrated together and um, with the same mission of ensuring that nightlife continues to thrive. Sure. And besides D.C., I guess New York is the only other city in the U.S. that really has this particular position. How does D.C. define nightlife? So by legislation, it's uh, sporting venues, art galleries, nightclubs, bars and restaurants. Oh, wow. Um, anything after five. But as you know, um, you know DC, unlike other cities um, that, that have a nightlife uh, mayor or night czar, um, we, have a, we have a thriving brunch scene, a thriving mm -hmm. day party scene that, um, that occurs before 5 p.m. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, my, my phone does not <laughs> only ring after five. Uh, we have a lot of things going on before five as well. So, it's robust, mm -hmm. uh, so I don't. We don't, you know, stick to the legislation when it comes to, you know, dealing with issues, um, whether it's a resident or a business. You know, we sort of just, you know, look at. We identify, um, you know, after five as well as before five as, as nightlife. I think this study that we're doing will help us to define it more clearly as mm -hmm. to what should actually be uh, titled as as you know nightlife. Great. 
So what advice would you give students studying hospitality and tourism if they want to explore a career in this industry segment? I would, I would definitely take advantage of um, you know, uh, we have a we have a very involved uh, restaurant association here mm -hmm. um, that a lot of establishments have become uh, members of. I think we had a, a few legislative issues to come up over over the past couple of years that have um, you know sort of motivated more businesses to get involved and become members of. Um, an organization that will will um, will fight for for their causes or or push their agenda, and I think that an entity like that mm -hmm. um, uh, would would definitely uh, be a good place to start sure. in terms of networking and and really uh, getting entrenched in what the issues are um, and really trying to figure out what it is what it is that you want to do in nightlife. My door is always open. Uh, we have some some very um, involved organizations, um, external stakeholders that really help to create and carve out what our nightlife is. We have uh, you know the the re Black Restaurant Week um, mm -hmm. that's that's starting to thrive and really um, you know galvanize and and really uh, extend out to more than just being a re a week about going to Black restaurants. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's more about education and networking and sharing information um, with with you know others to to ensure that you know if there's someone at the university that is interested in you know being more involved in nightlife you know there might be an opportunity that they that they don't know about right. um, and they can share it. Great. Well, Sean, thank you so much for sharing your insight. It's been such a pleasure um, having you today. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. And thanks to everyone out there for watching. Stay tuned for more from the LG Digital Studio at Georgetown SES.